I usually do. Um, Speaking of Prime, people should watch the uh, Legend of Vox Machina, which is on Prime Video. It's really good. Oh, I've heard. I've heard. If, I've heard. Even if good. you're not like particularly a fan of Critical Role, obviously there's Easter eggs in there for people who are are fans of it. But mm. I think the show is really good, regardless. Yeah, I've I've heard it's, it's good. very it's very mature. It's very adult. There's like a lot of swearing. There's like sex jokes. It's very it's very gory too. Like, oh, okay. Some of the way you know. Yeah, there were some gruesome deaths in yeah. the first three episodes. Like that's probably the way to go, though. With with that, because I I think Critical Role was mature. Content. It's very it's it's adult. It's <laughs> it's very mature, mature content. Yeah. They swear a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of sex jokes. There's a lot of like yeah. So it makes it fun. It's like it's part of the fun. Um. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh God, now I forgot. Oh God! It has nothing to do with game news, so I'm I'm gonna move off game news. I mean, I, yeah, I posted something today. Just like basically, the sales of Arceus are are really good. Which yeah, wasn't surprised. What a shock! <laughs> Color me surprised. A Pokemon game is selling well? No way. <laughs> yeah, but it's selling better than even um like Sword and Shield or uh. What did it say? Again, no, I have no surprise. It's it's such a new Pokemon game with with the way that it that it plays and looks like it it's gonna sell like hotcakes. Yeah, it's the second um um the second fastest selling game in Japan. This is only like the problem with this is it only takes physical sales into account. So yeah, you know, digital matters. Like yeah, but digital in matters. Japan at least um it's only behind animal crossing was wow. the fastest selling switch game in japan wow physically. animal uh, crossing holy moly that's actually crazy yeah it sold me. better than both uh brilliant diamond shining pearl yeah, and no sword and shield yeah wow. i'm not surprised it, it's it's just it, this is what people have wanted for i i feel like 10 years i feel like it's been 10 years and people have wanted this so badly so yeah. it's it's People had blue balls for this, and they finally got to release. And that's since that's it. since all of us that grew up with Pokemon and like MMOs existed, basically, and the internet existed, we've been asking for this. You, like, we've been patiently waiting, really. Yeah. Um, and it's it's like taking a while, but we got it. The only other thing I was going to mention is I was driving today. Um, Kate and I were driving, and we were driving to uh, back home. Because I, I, I get a weekly COVID test as part of school. Um, it's mm -hmm. like a requirement. And I saw a billboard. And it said, uh, drivers, thank you. I wasn't sure who it was from. So I was like, oh, that's really nice. Like, drivers do matter. Like, all the people that do all these, like, deliveries and, you know, all the people that, like, yeah. do all this stuff. They're like, oh, that's cute. It was an Amazon ad. And I the first thing I thought was, like, oh, that's a fucking lie. You don't care about your drivers. Nah, yeah, they sure don't. They're probably like, thanks, thank you, as the driver's peeing in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So, I, I just, like, I, I had, like, a nice feeling. I was like, oh, it's an unadvertised billboard that just says, drivers, thank you. Great. And then it had an Amazon logo at the bottom, and I instantly got angry. Because I'm like, Amazon, you don't mean that. You're lying. You don't mean that. You, you've never meant that. You as a company have never meant that. I'm sure there are people in the company that actually care, but... The company itself doesn't care. Nope. The company itself is like, do you need another bottle to pee in? We've got Amazon branded bottles for you. <laughs> We've got Amazon branded piss bottles. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody posted on Twitter an email. It's like, I just got this email from Amazon. Are they serious? And it's like, we're going to implement a catheter into your car so that you can pee in the car without any problem. It just hooks right in. <laughs> that's not that's not how catheters work, but nope. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised at all if that was a thing. I just see this email on Twitter. I'm like, yeah, I know. I knew this was happening. You, Jeff, you, Jeff you Bezos invested in it. You need a medical professional to insert a catheter. But, you know. <laughs> medical professional is going to come with you and do it. Yeah. <laughs> really? I, I just, yeah, that billboard made me chuckle. I, I just, because I'm like, at first, when if it was an unadvertised billboard, it would have been fine for me. Yeah. I don't know why, but it would have been fine compared to actually having like, a DoorDash logo, or that's yeah. like if a, I saw a billboard that says 
we care about getting your meal on time and it was a DoorDash ad? DoorDash. I, no. Yeah. I'm like, Lol. no, you don't. Shut up. Omega Lol. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't care about that at all. You, if you did, I, I would have gotten my full meal instead of half of it. Yeah. So I just, it, it drives me crazy. But um, anyway, sorry. I just was, I was thinking about it as we were talking about all this other stuff. Um, okay. Give me your Pokemon impressions so far. Yeah. Um, let's do. Yeah. Give me, give me your thoughts. Yeah. I'll, I'll so let you I'm talk. like, I'm like 10 to 12 hours into the game. I've have, uh, four, you know, they have these star ranks that you get just the more you complete the Pokedex. Basically. Um, I have four out of the 10 stars that you can get for that. And I've, eaten two out of the i just beat the second boss and i think there's five um or there's like there's a place where you save where it shows there's like you know slots for each boss basically and it looks like there's five of them so i assume there's it, five is five a bosses. boss a pokemon or a trainer it's a pokemon okay, it's one of the it. noble pokemon who's that's right been, like struck by lightning and you have to like dodge their attacks and then throw stuff at them and then you fight them and yeah that's it okay uh, got it Can continue um, I mean, what I'll say in general is, like, the game is really fun. Is it perfect? No. But I think there's a lot of really good ideas in this game. Um, Ghost and I were talking about this yesterday a little bit, but this... Yeah, this game has a lot of good ideas, and what I would really like to see out of Pokemon after this game is a fusion between the regular Pokemon games and this. So you have a mainline Pokemon game where the objective can still be, you know, you have the eight gyms, the eight badges, you have the Elite Four, you have, like, the team that you fight or whatever. But the catching mechanics and the way the world is set up is a little more like this, mm -hmm. a little more open world. You can kind of see the Pokemon, you can fight them to catch them, or you can just throw balls at them. I assume with, like, legendaries and stuff like that, you would need to fight them yeah, sure. to catch them. And Makes stuff sense. Like that. You wouldn't be able to just, like, sneak up on a legendary and just, like, throw a ball at them and catch them. That would be kind of silly. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Because this thing, this game does, you know, obviously the game is not, does not look exceptionally good. Um, the environments are not great. The, the character models look pretty good. The facial expressions of the characters I, I really like, actually. They have some good, like, make some good facial expressions occasionally. And, um, and the Pokemon models look good. But just about everything else looks subpar at best. Like, the textures are, are rough. The vistas aren't particularly impressive, to be honest. Um, and yeah, like, the draw the draw distance isn't very good. Um, which, you know, it's the Switch. We get it. It's limited. But Breath of the Wild and Xenoblade 2 both came out five years ago, and those games look way better than this. And they do the open world and the vistas and that just way better than this game does. Right. So I'm not sure what the issue is with like Pokemon or Game Freak or I, I don't know what the issue is, like why their games just don't look that good, basically. Um, yeah. Because other, you know, studios or developers have made perfectly good looking games on the switch again they're not right. the best they're not going to be top of the line graphics but this is this game is probably one of the of the big like first party or you know relatively high budget games on the switch this is probably one of the worst looking ones that there is like yeah i i i haven't played it but i agree with you I, if you put this side by side with Breath of the Wild, which Breath of the Wild, you know, for for what we've talked about a bit, they really utilized what they had to make that world look good. It wasn't like you know they didn't have the, I mean, it's a Switch. You don't you don't have the same power as as your your Xboxes or your your PlayStation system. By the way, Breath of the Wild came out on the Wii U, and I actually played that game on the Wii U, and it was perfectly fine on the yeah. Wii U as well. So yeah, I did too. So, 
there, usually it comes down to a couple things, I think, for me when I think of why they can't do it. Number one is money. If you're like an indie studio, maybe you can't do it because you can't, you can't afford it. That's reasonable. Oh, that should not be a problem. for. going to be a problem so that we can't say that. Um, next thing is style. This game does have a style, so there's, there's something there. But the style in this case shouldn't mean the graphics should look like this. The third reason is the development team doesn't know how. And I think it's that. I just think they don't know how. Or, yeah, or their, their engine, maybe, like, they're obviously, I'm sure they're using some sort of in-house engine, and maybe their engine is just shit. I don't know. I think it like, is. I'm sure it's the same or similar engine to Sword and Shield. And Sword and Shield didn't look great. So, why would this yeah, look I'm great? Sure this, I'm sure it's the same engine as Sword and Shield. It, it's, it's like, why we were making fun of Vault 76 but I, and Bethesda. Like, but I think Sword engine. of Shield looks significantly better than this game, to be honest. Like, yeah, those games all look great, but they're better than those. Yeah, the style of that game though didn't need it to look amazing. Though, it's such like a smaller, it's such a different style of game that it didn't need to do too much more. This game, when you do an open world, you you gotta have, you have to do a certain amount, obviously, to make it work. Yeah. Um. And like, you you can really screw that up. And this, the 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 only thing I can say about the graphics is there's not there, there's not enough. Actually, I, I just feel like somebody said, well, if we put too many trees in here, the game's gonna have a bad frame rate. So let's take away some trees, kind of situation. I think that's what happened. Is they tried it and they tried to put a lot of stuff in the world and it lagged. And they said, well, we can't do that. So we gotta we gotta take stuff away now. Yeah. That would make sense to me too. That was maybe what it was on like that first trailer where the frame rate was crap. And they said, "Well, we don't have enough time to fix it now, so just take stuff away." And that way, the frame rate will increase because there's not enough. You know, there's not as much to deal with for for that load for that load when you have to keep running through the world and things have to load in. It's not as much to load in. So that is. Yeah, it's it's sad though because there should be more. Like Xenoblade has a lot of stuff in their vistas. There's like a lot happening actually. A lot of monsters. There's a lot of like environmental features. The textures aren't like perfect, but you know, whatever. Character models look good. Um Breath of the Wild has a lot of stuff happening. There's monsters that roam in the world. There's like a lot of environmental effects and things like that. Like there's storms happening, weather effects. So there's a lot to manage and it manages it better. And Pokemon has like 10 trees at any point in time and some grass, some like that bad text, you know, that, that textured grass that, you know, is just like kind of like the best they could do kind of grass. Yep. Um, it, it just doesn't look great, but yeah, I, I was, w I personally was willing to forgive some of it because it's a switch. Yep. But when I saw the full thing and when you were playing it, I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. But um, overall, you know, visuals aside, the game is really fun. The one thing I will say, if you're a big fan of trainer battle, like Pokemon battles, trainer battles, this might not be your cup of tea because there's yeah. not a lot. I've played, you know, probably between 10 and 12 hours and I probably had less than 10, less than 10 battles. With a trainer. Uh, okay. I'm... Yeah, okay. I, and most of them yeah. just feel like a like a level check. It's like, there'll be a battle right before the boss, and it's like, okay, you were high enough level to beat this battle, so you should be good to take on the boss now. Like, is. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Though there wasn't one before the second boss, but there was like one right before the first boss, and I was like, okay, yeah. I think um, it's okay, because the game is supposed to be like, Early, yeah. early and, history. And, and, sure. And, and, and yeah, and, and the world is such that, like, not a lot of people have Pokemon, yeah. basically. That makes sense. That's kind of the way the world is, and, and that's fine. But I'm just saying, if you're someone who really loves the competitive aspects of Pokemon and battling trainers, either other humans or just the battling aspect of um, the main, of the, you know, the single player experience, the AI, there's not a lot of that in this game. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can't even do online battling. So there's that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I don't think the this um game uses a new system for the way the the turns work in battling. It's not like sequential turns where you both it's like okay, it's the next turn. You both select your moves and then it plays out based on the speed. Sure. Of each Pokemon, and each Pokemon gets to go, and then it's the next turn, and you do that again. In this game, there's a turn order, and when it's your turn, you get to pick a move, or throw an item, or throw a Pokeball, or whatever it is. Um, and then that happens, and then it's the other person's turn, and they get to do something. So it's not like one turn is each person getting an action. It's like each person has an individual turn, basically. And you can have situations where you get two turns in a row or they get two yeah. turns in a row. Yeah, yeah, Because there's the turn order thing and they have the agile style and strong style thing, which can affect the turn order. It's a, which I think is cool, Yeah, but it definitely wouldn't be balanced for competitive. No, like, I think this you can't do really that for bad. competitive. No, you can't bad do it for, for competitive. competitive. No, you can't. Um, it would just break the meta of but, competitive. But for a so, game like this, which isn't which isn't just single player, it's fine. Yeah. Whatever. And you can also have situations in the wild where you are fighting multiple Pokemon at once, which is actually really frustrating in my opinion. Like I had a situation where I was fighting like two or three Pokemon at the same time. How does that work? Do you have like one Pokemon fight one and then another one of your Pokemon? No, fight a you can one? only have one of you, one of your Pokemon out at the same time. And there's like three Pokemon ganging up on you. And it's kind of frustrating that, to be honest. That seems like, like an, an incredible oversight to not be like, Oh, there's three Pokemon. I should be able to throw three of mine out and multitask that out. It seems like somebody really didn't think that through. Yeah. There was one like side quest battle where, you just had to fight three stunkies at the same time. They were all weak, but but, but why can you, you get one turn one? and then they get three turns and you're like, all right, but it, cool. It doesn't. It also just doesn't make sense. Like it, it, it just doesn't make sense. In Pokemon, there was multi battling where like there was that one Pokemon game I forgot which one where you could like actually fight a horde of Pokemon at once. Um, yeah, that was Sun and Moon. I yeah, think. Sun and Moon, right? Where you fight like this horde of like. Three to three, four, five, whatever it was. Six. Yeah, six. Yeah, five, yeah. five or six, I think, was about the max. And they were super weak, remember. and you would fight with your one. But they were so weak that it just didn't, didn't matter. matter. But for this kind of game, I'm just going to say it. Like That game probably could have implemented a system where you could throw like two or three out at once. But, I mean, whatever. In this game, wh why can't you throw three Pokemon out at once? Like, There's really no yeah. reason not to, actually. like For yeah, some things... It kind of makes sense. Like, there's a, there's like some kind of realistic limitation. Like, you can't jump 20 feet in the air as your character because people don't jump 20 feet in the air. And it's kind of unrealistic in mm -hmm. most situations for like a game like this. Like, if your character could jump 20 feet in the air, you'd be like, why though? That, that seems weird. There's no reason why you can't have three Pokemon out at once. Like, what stops you from that? Yeah. It's not like it's connected to your like life force, and it's like, oh, if I have three out, I get super exhausted. Um, there's just no reason. So I don't know. I, I don't. It's super weird when it's like somebody didn't think that maybe a player would want to throw out two Pokemon at once at at like a multi battle, not like a single battle, one v one. No, but like if you're fighting two other Pokemon, why can't you be like throw your second Pokemon? Do you want to do that? Why not? I, I never yeah, understood I that. Yeah. So those situations I find a little bit annoying, but I think the agile style, strong style is like a cool, yeah. cool little twist they added into the battle system and the turn order is, I agree. is cool. I agree. The other thing they've done with the combat uh, that I really like is the way they've done uh, the way moves work, basically. When your Pokemon learns a move, levels up and learns a move, it just says that your Pokemon learn a move. Yep. And you have to go in the menu and check that out. And maybe they shouldn't have done it this way in particular. But what I like about this is your Pokemon now has a pool of moves. And if you learn more than four, you don't have to, like, delete a move and then go to some move tutor in some random city and relearn the move if you want to relearn the move. No, you just have this pool of moves and you can swap them in and out 
at will as yeah. long as you're not in battle. You just go into the menu, go to your Pokemon, there's an option that says change moves, and you can swap your moves in and out at will, which is really cool. Yeah. And there's, as opposed to having TMs in this game, because TMs wouldn't really make sense in this game, there's a person in the uh, in the town who just can teach your Pokemon moves. It costs money for each move for each individual Pokemon, so it's a little more expensive than having TMs, but again, TMs wouldn't really make sense in this world. It's like tra so. your training. You're, you gotta do yeah. a training montage with your Pokemon. Like, sure, yeah. why not? Whatever. It's like so, yeah. early, early history Pokemon. Interesting. Yeah. So, I like the way they've done that. The same thing happens with evolution. When your Pokemon can evolve, you just get a little notification that says, hey, your Pokemon can evolve, yep. and you have to go into the menu and click evolve, and they will evolve. And it happens, yeah. So, Makes sense. Um, so yeah, I like those things. The other thing, at, at least with combat, that I'm not sure that I like, it's just weird and different, is that the way experience is distributed, you don't get experience each time you defeat an enemy Pokemon. You get uh -huh. experience, if you're fighting multiple Pokemon, you get experience for the whole battle at the end of the battle. But if one of your Pokemon has fainted during that battle, they don't get any experience for that battle. Isn't that how regular Pokemon works, though? Like, if your Pokemon no, because, faint? because if you're fighting a trainer that has, like, six Pokemon, for example, obviously not a lot of trainers in Pokemon have six, but okay, right. let's say it's three. If you send out a Pokemon, kill one... And then you get experience for that. You get experience oh, for okay. that one no, after I see what you you're defeat saying. it. And then they send out another one and knock out the Pokemon that you have been using. That Pokemon's down, but it's gained the experience it had yeah. for the fighting that it did. Yeah. In this system, if you're fighting a trainer with three Pokemon, down one of their Pokemon, you don't get experience right there. You don't get experience till the end of the battle until you've knocked out all of their Pokemon, at which point your entire party gets experience for that battle. But if you have a Pokemon who's fainted, they don't get any experience. Even if they maybe killed two out of mm -hmm. the three up opponents Pokemon, which is just kind of weird. Yeah, that's an oversight. Yeah, what? Yeah, why they did it that way? I think I get why they did it that way. Actually, here's what I think happened. Um, they got every creative person in the company to walk into a room with a whiteboard, and they threw twenty markers on the table, and they said, "Put down every idea possible that isn't what's already in Pokemon now." And somebody wrote that as an idea, and they're like, "Fuck it, we're gonna try it." I think it's an oversight, though. It's like, you, it makes no sense. Like, your Pokemon defeated another one. You, you should get some experience for that. Like, you, you did an act that I think in most RPG games would give you experience. So, well, in why? Other R in other RPGs that have, like, party-based mechanics, there are, especially earlier RPGs, they've kind of phased this out in some games, but if one of your po if your party members is down at the end of the battle, you won't gain, that party member won't gain experience for that battle. Right. But the thing about it is, Pokemon, though you have a party of six, it's an individual yeah, fighting, exactly. like, one at a time, and they do, right. you know, they'll, like, knock out, and types are important. And in this game, also, as opposed to the mainline game, which I know you could turn this option off, but by default, you are and any time you defeat an enemy Pokemon, you're given the option to swap to a different Pokemon Correct. based on what they're sending out next. Yeah, that's not in this game either. So if you maybe you have a good type matchup on what you're fighting there, so I defeat a grass Pokemon with my starter, which is Cyndaquil, and then they send out a rock Pokemon, well, I either gotta switch or Cyndaquil's probably gonna go down. Like yeah, for a single player game, it makes more sense to be like, do you want to swap? Though it makes it easier, The um, having that's kind of nice. Like, for competitive, I get why that's not a thing, obviously. But, I don't know. I think it adds challenge, but... Yeah, no, I don't mind that it's that. It's just annoying that in that situation, now my Cyndaquil isn't going to get experience exactly. at all because it got KO'd by the second Pokemon that they sent out, even though it knocked out the first one. Right. So, so it's like you're just having to swap out a bunch, but really even then that's sense. a free hit on the next one kind that comes a, in. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. It's but. an oversight. I think somebody got too cute. They wrote on the board. The guy was desperate for ideas, so he put it in there, and that's what happened. I mean, like, but the board, like, had tons of other ideas that I think are good, like agility and strength, like the idea of you change your priority based on like, okay, do you want your next move's priority to be faster, or do you want to be stronger, but lose some speed? That makes a lot of sense. It's it's yep. a good trade-off. Um, but, 
this experience thing, what you're describing, it's a bad idea. Yeah, I, I don't like it. It's a bad idea. The, I, I'm sure somebody likes it. But I, I hate it when I heard it from you again now that I understand it. Now I hate it. It's a bad idea. It's, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work good. for Pope. It doesn't work for Pokemon no. specifically. Yeah. Um, Works for other things, but not this. But yeah. You know, they tried a lot of things. There's some, there's a lot of good ideas and a lot of not so good ideas. Uh, not a lot. And a few, they're not terrible. Like, this experience thing is like, it's annoying, but does it ruin the game? No, not really. Like, the good outweighs the bad by a long shot in sure. this game. That's okay. Awesome. The game is fun. Even though the world looks kind of bland and not great. The world's still fun to explore, go around catching Pokemon. It's fun to, like, speed run catch Pokemon. You see a group of, like, three or four in an area, and then you just, like, pop, 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 and, like, you know, just throw. Yeah, throw no, it's... And catch them. That, that sounds fun. like a good system for catching Pokemon in a game like this. Um, just, like, just bam, bam, there you go. Keep throwing them. Yeah. Um, the targeting's a little... You have to be really close to target a po like lock onto a Pokemon, which I find a little bit obnoxious to be quite honest. But okay, um, so yeah, but that 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 could use some work. There's also like if there's multiple Pokemon nearby, there's no way to like manually switch targets. Um, why? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay, oversight, <laughs> oversight. Like there you don't is. have to lock on to throw a Pokeball, but obviously locking on. It's know. nice. <laughs> it, it, it to be precise, lot. it's, it's nice. Yeah, precision um, is important. I would imagine. So yeah, um, so there, there's some things like that where it's just like a little janky, but you know, it's their first go at it, so you can, you know, give them a pass a little bit. Also, it's Pokemon. Like, yeah, um, Pokemon's gonna get a pass in general on a lot of things because. In this case, people just want something different, and it is different. Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of things that we talked about it. This seems like a really good prototype. Yeah, It's a really good prototype of what yeah, could be the future. Of, yeah, a lot of good ideas. And again, I would like to see a fusion of this and a normal Pokemon game where there's like more battling. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like the battling. I think it's fun. I, I like this for what it is. I think it's fun. The other thing I'll say that I think is a little bit annoying. It's pretty fast to traverse the world, especially with the um like the mounts that you get. Like the mounts move pretty fast. But at least so far in the first two areas, there's only two fast travel sections in each area. There's one right at the beginning of the area, and then there's one somewhere else in the area. Which is just like the areas aren't that small, so I yeah. feel like there should be more actually no the second one actually had a third fast travel point i take that back um but yeah i just felt like with the first area specifically there probably should have been at least one more fast travel point if not two yeah because getting to some of the areas that were a little more distant was just like okay i just gotta run through all this crap that i don't care about yeah get there like and again it doesn't help that the world is not as build as somebody like xenoblade like xenoblade if you want to run across it there's a lot to see like you may run across something you're you're not familiar with and you you go explore that and it's it's actually nice to explore it um in this game i'm gonna be honest i would never explore like it's highly uninteresting looking at the world so i'd probably just do the quests like try and find other pokemon and, and go from there i have complaints watching the game though i've mentioned them to you number one you can't swim dumb dumb idea you're an, it's an open world game you should be able to swim this is in 2006 you can swim in games now i mm -hmm. i feel like that shouldn't be said to anybody now in the gaming community but there better be a really good reason why you can't swim in a game i it it's like it's silly uh voice acting where is it where to oh, go? Yeah. I, for, I forgot about that. Nintendo, Wait, where is where my voice acting? It was, it was never there. Where, to, can't where, where is it? Go. Just where is it? Like, where is it? It's time. It's time, Nintendo. You've gotten away with it long enough. It's time to put. It's time. It's time to put voice acting in your in your games. Yeah. Mar like Mario and Zelda. I don't really care as much. There's not a lot of dialogue in those games, but Pokemon's a freaking RPG. You talk to a lot of people. There's a lot of dialogue. Give me some voice acting. Yeah, there should Give be. Break. Pokemon needs some. I'm I'm tired of seeing of of like watching Pokemon games, not hearing the audio when people are talking, and it's a lot of audio. Like, I'm 
there's a lot of things that, that that they're talking about. Put it in there. Yeah, we ha- you have Put it you in. have the you have the money, you have the budget, you can pay some voice actors. You may pay five people to do it. Just five. Do what Bethesda did with Oblivion and Skyrim. Do you know what Beth- Bethesda freaking does? They pay like four, three to four good voice actors to do certain roles, and then the, everybody else is done by five people. Basically, you hear the same yeah. voices all over the place. Just do that. Who cares? Just do it that way. But Nintendo's like, nope, we don't need it. We don't have to spend the money on it because nobody's going to care. And I hate it. Mario didn't need it, though. Mario doesn't need it. Zelda, it'd be interesting if Zelda had more of it. I, I think, actually kind of liked it in Breath of the Wild. It would be good. Yeah, it'd be nice if they had more of it. Um, Even just, even if the voice acting isn't amazing, have some. Have some. Like, Pokemon is in full 3D now. We've gotten away from the isometric view of the of the past, where it felt more acceptable because it was like a handheld game and you know just looked a little more old school. No, we're in full free 3D now. We need voice acting. I'm kind of done. Yeah, no, we voice acting. We need it. Um, certain games it doesn't matter. Like there are certain games where you just you're like, yeah, sure, you don't need voice acting in this. Like, it's not a big deal. Pokemon, this is on the Switch. And it's an open yeah. world game. It's like not on your handheld anymore. It's not on a DS. Yeah. It's it's a it's, fully 3D world. It it's like it, pretty expansive. Put some voice acting tw- in. It's 2022. Pretty much every single RPG that at least has a you know a decent enough budget has ba- is basically fully voice acted. Yeah. You know, all of the cuts, all of the cutscenes are gonna be are gonna be voice acted because it so. makes it. It gives life to the characters. Like, yep. even freaking Fire Emblem started putting some voice acting in their games. Are you kidding me? Three Houses was fully voice yeah, acted. Yeah, like, it was. Every line of dialogue in that game, even some of like the random shit you talk to people in the monastery, that was voice acted. And it's that great. Game was, had a crazy amount of voice acting. And it's great. It, it makes really the is. world feel way more alive, and it's way easier to get engaged in the story when there's yeah. voice acting the story it, of the characters it adds more to what the characters are saying for, for me at least like it adds more to it like the tone of how they're saying it the it adds more life to it wait yeah we know we know nintendo can do it because they they did it for fire for fire emblem and you know xenoblade has voice acting too i know you weren't a huge fan of the voice acting in that game but they had, tried i i appreciate them trying i appreciate them trying i do appreciate them trying it wasn't great, but, but yeah. they tried. Oh, it, it, it's time. It's time for voice acting in Pokemon. Like, we're, I'm kind of done with no voice acting in Pokemon. Yeah. Even in games where it's, like, bad voice acting, I don't know why, but even bad voice acting can be funny. Uh, Mega Man X4, I'm looking r- directly eye-to-eye eye at you. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. It can be legendary. So, I... Yeah. The... Two sentences can be read completely differently when someone says it out loud, which mm-hmm. it can happen. You can two sentences can be completely different. They can be deciphered completely differently by tone, and that is what we need. So, Nintendo, sick and tired of you taking down YouTubers' content because they put a song of yours in it, and not having you hire Matt Mercer to, to voice a character. Hire you, you. You have Chris Pratt playing Mario. Mm-hmm. you can do better now <laughs> yep. we can do better now so I, yeah sorry derailed the rest of your thoughts for pokemon um no i, I think i'm i think i've given my thoughts i okay. think uh i think the game is fun i think it's good i think it's i think it's worth picking up you know if you're especially if you're a pokemon fan or maybe you were a fan at one point and you kind of got tired of the same old same old thing I, I think this game is good i think it's worth picking up and even though you know it's a little rough around the edges especially in the graphical department and you know they tried some things they don't all work but i think it's uh they i tried. think it's a really it's a really fun game it's fun to explore the world and just like catch pokemon and you know I think it's cool. I think it's I think it's worth picking up. I I actually would recommend this game to people in in general. Yeah, it, they try things. I I do appreciate them trying some things. Um, yeah, it seems like they did try some cool stuff. Not everything hits, but when you try and innovate, that may happen. Yep. So I I appreciate them trying, is what I'll say. Um, at some point I'd like to play it, but once I get through all my other stuff, 
um which i'm i'm yep. i'm carving through now actually yep. uh i'll i'll get there um so you so you're currently recommending this game that is your stance yep okay got I recommend it, it. okay I think um it's good. let's talk about total war mm -hmm. i played a little bit i haven't played a ton more i i i got some dlc today so before the sale ended i acquired dlc not all of it actually i don't know why but i was having some problems getting some of the dlc um can i actually make a comment on total war real quick it's There's surprisingly it's also surprisingly difficult to get some of it loaded onto your game from steam let me explain let me explain hold on hold on before you go right. if where you go <laughs> you're an idiot auto which i understand i am um the free content is hard to load here's how you do it let me explain it to you when you go in the, for you, you don't just do it from steam by the way it, it that doesn't work as well as the way i figured out how to do it you boot up the game in the game there's downloadable content you click on the free stuff in the downloadable content in the secondary steam window that comes up you click download then it triggers the the thing to say oh you're going to want to download this you exit out of that window even though it doesn't confirm you're downloading it once you've exited out of the window the game says you need to restart this game to get this content you restart the game it then finally confirms that the download is acquired into the game then you reload the game and the downloaded content's there but then you have to do that again for the other 10 things exactly the free, the free content they exactly have there. so that's not the way i that's not the way I did it. The way I did it, I just did it through the Steam store. I had yeah. to do it for each piece of content individually. Yep. You had to like go into that piece of content, click download. Yep. The Steam would do a little like, hey, syncing new content thing, yep. and then it would be done. But yeah. it was still really Annoying. inefficient that you had to click on every single one and click yeah. download on every. Instead, it, you could just like, hey, can I just have all of the free content now? And you can just patch that all in and we're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, why, like, why isn't it just in the game? Why do I have to patch it in why yeah, don't you don't. just update it into the game already like why do i have to acquire it yeah i don't know yeah it's dumb i agree it, so uh, yeah i did try the way you did it, it just for what, whatever reason it wasn't as effective um so total warhammer 3 if you do dlc please do better <laughs> please do better i'm sure it's gonna be the same and it i don't know so if it's frustrating a, i don't know if it's a issue on on uh creative assembly side or sega who's the publisher or if it's a steam thing i really don't, I don't know, know. But... i just i want it to be a little bit easier how about if it's a free dlc just put it in the game don't make me download it just put it in yeah. i guess if somebody just doesn't want to download it maybe for whatever reason i guess that's why they're doing it but maybe they could just turn off the dlc once they get into the game just turn or not play it maybe yeah, they don't like... want that dlc character in their game i i really don't know i i, I don't get it um no now that i'm thinking about it, i don't get it either if it's free D yeah if it's free dlc why do i have to click a separate thing to download it it should just be there it should just be there like it's free dlc just automatically install it it's just part of the game i don't right. know um okay now actually talking about the game um i did the malika thing but when i got all the dlc i kind of did the other campaign that i got downloaded on there oh, um, mortal empire yeah thank mortal you Empires. mortal empires yeah. And I decided to play the the one of the vampire women. There was like a vampire lady who has like a husband that you can also oh, get. Von Car the Von Karns Thank Karstens. you. Yeah. Von Karstens. Um, so I decided to play as the vampires. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I want to be a vampire. Yeah, they're um, one of the they're they're a Warhammer one race. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. I like it. Um, I haven't gotten too far, but like what I've played so far, I've enjoyed. Um, I'm still learning how to play like. There's still certain things that I'm trying to figure out. Um, I'm like getting used to like, okay, do I like expand quickly or do I like hunker down for a little bit and like build up and then go out and expand? Like I've been going where like, okay, I see settlements that are like right next to me that are either available or maybe have like only one faction. Like that's the faction's only place. So I like go get it. Um, yeah right away but oh no we had a we had a spectrum oh yeah a spectrum okay um so like right in my in my run that i'm in right now like i've already conquered two other settlements um but like i'm also low on income now because my armies are getting bigger so like yeah. i'm trying to balance that i was like okay maybe i should stop going after settlements and improve my income 
and try and get order into the ones I just conquered. Um, like dealing with, um, you know, other, other, like getting technology boosted up. Um, it, it's, it's a process trying to figure it out, but I'll, I'll say that there's some cool stuff. I, I, I like the, the actual battles playing the battles can be yeah. pretty, pretty fun, particularly when you're just decisively killing somebody is pretty mm -hmm. funny. Like the vampires just bringing in their bats on the flanks and having the yep. little skaven rats just like start to encircle themselves because they know that they're just going to get completely surrounded instantaneously. And yep. then 60 seconds into battle, you just see decisive victory because you encircle yeah. them minute one of the they battle. All, they all fl they all flee. You, the, you broke. You, it's you broke it's them. it's cool. It's like a cool. It's like cool to to do all that. Yeah. And um, most of the time in this game, you don't win battles by killing all of the enemies. No, you, you break their mor morale and they all flee. Yeah, they just flee. Basically. Yeah, yeah, they just flee. Um, the Skaven, like obviously, like they're they're kind of the race that seems like they're like the it's like e early on when you're playing like certain campaigns, like you see Skaven and like they're easy to bully because I, I would guess their units are really weak. So maybe they're like one of those like zergling type races where you, you have to like completely outnumber your opponent. But like every time I fight the Skaven, even when the quote unquote numbers are the same, I just freaking route them. And I, I think it's because I it is is that am I thinking that's right? I know nothing about this, so like I'm figuring it out. Yeah, but, I don't Skaven are I mean I I don't know that much either, to be honest, but Skaven to me are the they're the Zerg. Yeah. So there's gonna be more there's gonna be more of them. So if they're not outnumbering you by a lot, you're probably gonna run them yeah. over. I think their individual units are very weak. Yeah, um, I kinda wanna play as a Skaven one time just to see, but I've um, actually like I've seen like some tier lists. Apparently, some of the Skaven factions at least are actually really strong. At least if oh, you yeah. know how to play them. I, so I haven't dived into any of that. I'm just trying to learn how to play. That's literally where I'm at right now. Is I'm learning how to play, but it's it's cool. The game is cool. Um, there's a lot to it. So so far, I I like it. Um, I want to play more of it just to try it. All the races are just like I, this. Even this, I do like the Skaven, the little rats. I I, I do like them. They're they're funny. So in Warhammer three, there is a uh, one of the new races is like it's a human it's a human race, but okay. they're like they're called Kislev, but they're it's basically Russia, like it's just the northern you know northern <laughs> yes ter territory humans. They have they have bears. They they ride bears. <laughs> like when's that game coming out again? <laughs> when's that game coming? Two out? week two weeks from today, February seventeenth. Pre ordered. <laughs> Are you gonna play any other? faction auto no mm -mm, not really bears damn bears bears, bears sounds good there's war, some cool there, yeah the v vampires are just i just like them because you just get like bats and stuff and they just yeah. like the bats just fly around i had like the skaven try and like arrow down the bats with their crossbowmen or archers or whatever they are i think they're crossbows in this one but i just then flew the bats away and and they're like oh we're just we're just screwed and then you bring them back in Thank you. And you come back, yeah. It's just like yeah, with super like. Fun. I mean, I guess the bats aren't necessarily like. They're you just harass. They're just a harassment unit. You just like yeah, bring them around. The, the high with the high speed units, which are like the cavalry and the flying units. Generally, that's the best strategy because they get a lot of uh, in the stats. They have this stat at the bottom. It's called charge bonus. Like when you charge an enemy, you do that extra damage yeah. when you charge when you charge them. And generally, like cavalry are best when they're charging things. Yeah, of course. And I assume flying units are the same. So the best strategy with those is hit and run. You go in, you charge, you do that extra damage. I think it's for like ten or fifteen seconds or something, and then you retreat and you do it again. Yeah. I, so when I did it, I just like basically won after doing that. The yeah. the bats just to the Skaven just went. <gasps> <laughs> just sandwich yeah. them with the front line just coming in and and boxing them in it's cool i want to play as a skaven though because i want to see like okay are the skaven actually the zergling the zerg where you have like huge numbers but individually they're super weak but when you get like normally like let's say your full army is like 1500 units just for example it's probably like 2000 but let's just say that for example 
the Skaven maybe are like 5,000, and that's how they win. It's like, oh no, we have like 5,000 units. That's how we're going to win. We just need like 5,000 units to take down your 2,000. we got to yeah. beat you 2.5 to 1 or something. It seems like it's that way. But they're they're yeah. funny. And apparently, like, I don't know if when you play as them they get this, but sometimes when I go like look in settlements, the Sk they're like, the Skaven are hiding in the settlement. So like they get to hide in the settlement because they're underground or something. I don't know. That, that's yeah, cool, too. Yeah, they their settlements are like under the city generally so yeah, yeah when they're i think that's how they work generally yeah. i haven't played as played as them either because you never i obviously i've seen them like as factions on the world map but sometimes i'll go into a, a, a city and there's like there's skaven investing the place and then all of a sudden there's like a skaven faction that pops up yeah and i'm like oh cool <laughs> they're just there okay i like that yeah like a, it's a hit it's a race that like hides because they're underground so they hide yeah and they're rats. They're you can't rats. tell they're, they're there. Rats. And they're a corruption too. Like there's Skaven corruption. Yeah. So like you just get rats in your city. Like what a what a crazy thing. There's like uh there's rats, there's the Skaven corruption, the vampiric corruption. There's like two chaos others. Corruption. Chaos corruption. Chaos corruption. Yeah. It's cool. I, I actually like the idea of like, oh, are you letting the Skaven overrun your city? Okay, well here they come. They're uprising into your city. It's a cool idea. There's some cool ideas that I like. Um I, I'm 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 interested to play more of it. It's it's a cool game that I'm I'm glad that I picked up a while ago and I'm glad that you played it to, to get me to play it. it. It's fun. Yeah. That's that's my thought. It's just like it's a fun game. Can can be complicated, but yeah, once you it, start figuring things out. Cool. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of different factions that like okay, generally they all play the same because sure. there's units and there's buildings and you like build buildings which allows you to get more income or build certain units and then there's like a tech tree though every every faction's tech tree is like slightly different in in some way um and and then usually every faction has like some sort of faction mechanic um just depends on who you're playing like yeah the High Elves, who I'm playing right now in Warhammer 2, for example, have a... They have this, like... They have this separate resource called Influence, which you can use to, like... Basically increase or de decrease, like, your or other factions' dip diplomatic relations with other factions. Okay, I like um, that. And, yep. and sometimes you spend it to, uh... So you have to spend it to hire certain, like, sure. hero units and stuff like that. Yeah, too. sure. Um... And you also get, like, pop-up events that are related to, like, what they call the Phoenix Court, which I guess is, like, their council or yeah, something sure. like that. So you get pop-ups and so stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, every faction has some sort of faction mechanic that you yeah. have to have to deal with, basically, um, that makes every faction a little bit unique. Yeah. Um, it, no, it's it's cool. It's cool. I like the Phoenix Court. Like, hey, Phoenix Court's yeah. in session, whatever. Um, yeah. The vampires just like, yeah, we just run around and like corrupt stuff, I guess. We're just corrupting the land. And if you go outside your corruption, you get hurt. Your units yeah, actually take damage, so yeah, you're like, attrition. oh shit. I better hurry and take over the settlement, otherwise I'm going to get attrition uh, damage because I'm a vampire not in a corrupted area. It, it, it's like a nice idea. It's like the creep for um for the Zerg. Yeah, for Zerg a cool yeah. idea. This game has cool ideas. Cool. Yeah, I mean, att attrition's a thing for every faction. If you're fighting in a in a terrain that is like either has corruption or you know, if you're a non-corrupt race, or if you're fighting in a terrain that is just like unsuitable for yeah. your faction, you take attrition. Yeah, because I've seen cities so. with like suitable to be yeah. to be settled, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, there, there's there's that too. So if yeah. you're if the city is in an unsuitable climate, you take penalties to like public order and growth and yep. the construction cost of buildings and sure. stuff like that. So yeah, I've I've noticed that. Um, the, just the suitable yeah. part, I've noticed the, that. So most... I assume. As far as the beginning of the game goes, the most important part of the beginning of the game is to control the first province that you start in basically usually you start with one settlement and 
thing you should focus on at the beginning is to control the other, usually two other settlements that are part of that province. Yeah. And to control that province. Because yeah. once you control an entire province, you can put a commandment on the province, which just gives you a buff yep. to the province. Um, the other thing about having the provinces is like. So you've noticed, I assume, in the buildings, every building can go up to. Well, not every building, but buildings go from level 1 to level 5. Yep. Only the province capital can go past level 3. Yep. Okay. So basically, any building that goes only up to level 3, you want to put in the subsidiary um. You won't put in the other ones. Yeah, because, I mean, like, because, they can only get so there. Like, yeah, because they can't. Any building that has level 4 or level 5, those the smaller settlements can't build those buildings because those can only go up to level 3 on the main the main building. Yeah, sure. Um so that's just like a general strategy thing. Growth growth is really important resource source early on just to grow your settlement so you can increase the uh the main settlement basically increase yeah. it to the level 3, level 4, level 5. Um so yeah, but like expanding is important because that's how you get more land and get more income from that. And also you, you make a lot of money in this game just from like winning battles, right? It's like when you win a battle, you, you make Yeah, money you make you make your currency, that. whatever that is. Yeah. Your currency's different. Most most factions it's it's gold or whatever. Yeah. I assume it's gold. I know with the I haven't played the vampires, but I've seen someone play them. They have that like I don't know what it is, it like souls or something like that. I don't just, know. Just I just think it's what. souls. Just say it's souls for now. I don't know what it is actually. It's it's like it looks like souls though. So you like harvest souls to make your buildings. And your units. And your yeah, and your units and, and all that. It, it, yeah. It shouldn't all be the same currency, I think. Like some factions may have a different currency. It makes sense. So I, I appreciate that. That it's just all, not all the same. Because I don't think it should I, be. I think for the vast majority, it's the gold, yeah. basically. Like, dwarves should be gold, right? Like, dwarves should be gold. The human races probably should just be gold. Yeah, it's gold, yeah. Um, Like, the elves, sure, gold it's is fine. Still gold. But, like, yeah. there are some yeah. races where it's like, there's like a chaos-based race. Is that really going to be gold? Maybe it should be something different. Like, the vampires being something different from gold is is actually interesting for me. It acts like gold, but it's not. So it's yeah. it's kind of nice. It's basically, basically the same. It's basically but, the same, but it's like, but it's not. So it's called it's something just different. A, so it's a it's a flavor thing. It adds uniqueness. Yeah, it's 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 nice for me at least. Um. So I I, I appreciate that. That's what I was gonna say. I appreciate that. The vampires also have like this blood kiss ability that I haven't used yet. Um, I think it's like if you take down certain units in battle, like a hero unit. Or something like that. There's like an assassination thing you can do. You can use this like blood kiss ability. I, I there's like all this stuff that I'm like reading on the toolbars. I'm like, oh, what the hell is a blood kiss? Does that mean you convert a hero to your side? You make him a vampire? That'd, that'd be cool. That's what it sounds like. That'd be cool. So that's that's also something that I'm like looking forward to is figuring all that stuff out. But yeah, game's cool. I want to play more of it. I also want to play as Skaven, the little rats. I want to mm. I want to be the faction that is hiding in the city and all of a sudden the beastmasters walking in and they're like hmm looks like an open city for me and then the rats just devour him and bring him down like nope yep thank you I mean yeah there's a lot of cool factions like the the freaking the, the there's the lizard men yeah oh my god lizard men look they cool they have freaking they have freaking they're high tier units there's just like dinos it's a dinosaur like, i've seen like, it on the map too like, like stegosaurus freaking yeah artil artillery units and like t-rex units like okay. i saw on the world map a giant t-rex on the yep. map that was the lizard people i was lizard, like lizard man. i was like damn freaking uh, t-rex <laughs> like the high elves for example some of their high tier units they can get like like eagles and phoenixes and mm. they have a dra they have a building they have dragons like oh my god dragons in the, the late the late game. it's it's just so, so sweet he's like oh I, when i saw the t-rex i was like oh my god there's a t-rex <laughs> wow they just get a t-rex what are you supposed to do about that you're just like 
the dwarves and he's like, yeah, we we're we're gonna stay on the front line, and a T Rex just enters the map. I think this was fun. We're gonna go. Yeah, I'm sure the dwarves get like these like other like underground based like animal units or something. I'm sure there's like some and like monster of the deep that the dwarves use or something. The dwarves, um, the dwarves are they're the faction I played in Warhammer One for my campaign. I don't. The dwarves have very little variety in on their units. Most of their units are just they just have a lot of infantry, heavily armored infantry. Yeah, which they have no. Nope. Spectrum is killing me right now. It's it's powerful. Um, it's powerful. It's it's bad. Um, they have no cavalry. They have these little uh, gy- they have like little helicopters. They're called gyrocopters. Yeah. So Makes they have those, and then they have some uh. They have a bunch of like artillery. They have this thing called the organ gun, which is like this four-barreled cannon. Oh my god! Cool. Okay. Um, so dwarves get other cool like tech-based weapons. Like I don't are... particularly like the dwarves. They just like they just feel like they don't do anything special. They're just like really heavily armored. They're kind of good in the early game, but in the late game, when the enemy has like they don't deal with monsters like large units very well, and enemies that have like armor piercing because they have a lot of armored units they have like no non-armored units basically yeah. so um yeah they're okay but i don't i don't love them at least from my experience with them in warhammer one okay um the moly they added okay so you know the basic thing that is in like oh my god somebody really doesn't like you at yeah. spectrum Somebody just doesn't yeah. like you at Spectrum. This hasn't happened in a while, so... Yeah, you know. it's, it's been a minute. Um, but yeah, there's that thing where, you know, you get notifications that are like, hey, you have a hero to move, or you have a, something to build in a settlement, or you have this and that. Yeah, that doesn't exist in Warhammer 1. Oh my only god. The end, only the end turn button is there, and you have to, like, scroll through your forces and your buildings to That's... make sure you did everything that you needed to do. Yeah, it's nice to have, like, the the like notification be there yeah. it's really nice so good thing also, they added that you know how armies in warhammer 2 have zone of control so if you like get within somebody's range i think like they can't move as far or, like it's hard to get away from yeah sure people. makes sense yeah that does that doesn't exist in warhammer 1 either oh, no. i literally in warhammer 1 at the beginning of the campaign i literally had an army like ring around the rosy me for like 20 fucking turns <laughs> and i was trying to kill them it was so annoying i was like <laughs> That's kind of funny thinking about it. It's like, damn it, get back here. <laughs> get back here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like run, 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 run. Oh my god. That's so funny. Just like picturing you awful. getting upset at your computer and just being like, you son of a bitch, get back here. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> and the Skaven just running like, no, oh, don't kill us. <laughs> yeah, Sca- Skaven didn't exist in Warhammer 1. Oh so. no, they didn't. That's a tragedy. Oh man, that's tragic. That that sucks. I'm so glad that they're in Warhammer 2, though. They're great. They look great. They're funny. They're funny when you talk to them in diplomacy. Oh, my God. Anyway. You can do diplomacy with the Skaven. You can. It's great. It's amazing yeah. when you do diplomacy with them. I, I'm, I, I, I'm very excited whenever they, they do diplomacy with me. And they're like, please, please join us in a defensive pact or something like that. And I'm like... Of course I will help you, you small rats. <laughs> of course I'll help you. But, yeah, in certain campaigns, they're like, um, the one that I was playing with, Malekith, the Skaven were around me, so they're like, you should kill these rats. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> they're so, But they're sad. And I keep yep. freaking absolutely demolishing them in, in war because I'm on an easy difficulty right now. So it's 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 just, I felt sad for them. Yep. Um, but the game's fun. I like it. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a very good um, merge between the like I don't call it four X, but like you know they have some base building and like settlement building and you know population management and that kind of stuff. Like in four X games, it's and then there which is the campaign map, and then you have the RTS battles. You know. Yeah, it's like so. um. There's like a blend of Crusader Kings in there. There's a blend yeah. of, of 4X in there. 
and then with the big battles, there's those big battle scenario situations. It, it's a nice like somebody put all that in a blender, and the total the total war series got spit out, and it's 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 cool. Um, yeah. it's definitely Seriously. fun and different. Sirius has existed for a long time. Yeah. Also, so they're um, the Warhammer. At least from what I've heard, the stuff that I've watched, there's probably different opinions. Warhammer Two, at least so far, is is the best of them. Basically, the best oh, Total War game. Interesting. So. Okay. Yeah, because there's a lot of them. So that's there's a um, lot of them. Yeah, there's a ton. But yeah, Total War Two is fun. I enjoy it. So Total War Three. It's on the on the horizon. Yep. Um, if all the stuff carries over, like from Warhammer, like it did from Warhammer Two, that's that's really awesome. As long as there's some improved I, graphics yeah. and things. I don't. Like that. I don't think there's going to be a. Uh, the combined campaign isn't gonna be out at launch. I'm sure they will have it at some point, but it's not gonna be there at sure. launch. You can only play the, the uh, whatever the Warhammer Three campaign yeah. is because the in Warhammer Two, the main campaign for Warhammer Two is the Vortex campaign. Yep. And then and then Mortal 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 Empires was the DLC which combined the two and kind of it's a little more open ended. There's not the you know the vor the vortex is the objective of the vortex campaign with those like rituals and stuff like yeah. that. I don't know how far you got in it, but like um yeah, in Mortal in Mortal Empires it's like a there's an objectives menu, but each faction has their own particular objectives. Usually right. it's to conquer a certain set of settlements and defeat a couple of different factions probably yeah. to wipe out. like with the dwarves i had to kill all the green skins and oh the god basically the, the orcs goblins yeah, the, the or, or the orc and goblin faction basically yeah, yeah. They're called the green skins yeah and, of course dwarves have this. to be the ones to take them out they're, they gotta they're fighting for the land right makes and, sense and then i and then i had to basically control all the the dwarven territory i had to basically confederate either kill or confederate all the other uh dwarven faction okay you gotta be the supreme dwarven leader makes sense you gotta be the the high king of the dwarves yep the high so, king of the dwarves so um, i think most of the mortal empires campaigns have similar objectives to hmm. something like that like yeah that makes sense um anyway let's um let's start closing down because um i gotta i gotta do some other stuff here um but yeah we'll we'll more with more total war we'll we'll continue the discussion for sure let me play a bit more i'm I, i'm enjoying it though i think it's fun um yep anyway let's conclude here um for anybody that's still watching in the uh twitch stream or the vod thanks for watching and be sure to check out all of our stuff on youtube video will go up sometime this weekend or early next week and possibility of some content happening this weekend from the twitch channel so thanks for everyone stopping by uh spoon as always thank you mm -hmm. and hopefully spectrum won't destroy you next week <laughs> we shall see it bodied Never you know. today um just at the end yeah but yep thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you uh sometime either this weekend or next week mm -hmm. night everybody night